I'm back with more astro coolality, and I wanted to talk about the square between the Sun and Neptune in a composite chart. What happens when we see this pretty pesky dude show up between each other? So, composite charts are midpoint charts where we, and this also applies to Davidson relationship charts, where we take the midpoints between planets or uh, reference points, depending on the chart, and we find the birth chart of the relationship itself. So it's one chart. It's not like synastry where we're doing chart comparison. So the sun is the identity structure between the two people. It is their energetic flow and what represents the, the, the individuality, how that blends. And so, when Neptune is in a square aspect to the Sun, this has a weakening effect on the individual identities of the two people involved. Neptune is always going to be about loss, about um, subtle degra degradation, things that are unreal, things that are clouded, things that are chronic, um, things that are unrealistic that it, it represents romance, um, refined sugar, where Venus is raw sugar, Neptune is refined sugar, and things that need to be seen through in order to be clear represents addictions and escapism uh, sensitivities. And so, in a square aspect, we actually see two people who are causing each other to lose energy. They are robbing each other of vital energetic power when we have this particular square. It has a weakening effect on the personal identities because the sun is our individuality and how that blends, and Neptune is things that are unclear, things that are chronic, things that are sensitive, things that are romantic. There is an enormous amount of idealism and romance and assumptions between two people when they have this particular square. Early on in the relationship, they really think that they have found Shangri-La, and so we have to come down sometime when we're so high. A lot of expectations with this particular square. We really assume the other person's going to bring us everything that we've been looking for. And we have found somebody that God has delivered to us. We're very much not telling the truth about ourselves on a deep level when we have the square. We're showing and telling what we want to be known. This is a lot of what contributes to the larger than life high degrees of serious, seriously um, all-encompassing romance that we have in the beginning with this particular square. I mean this one, you know, creates such a such a fervor of feeling that I have found everything that I have been looking for and so we get to that point by seeing what we want to see and showing the other person what we want to show. When we aren't showing and telling what's really what we're really about we don't have the opportunity to create true compatibility because we are not able to correctly vet or um, really flush out what that other person is about. Flush out. I don't know if I actually know the difference between that one. Um, so what it is, is we have to show and tell what we're really about so the other person has the opportunity to correctly evaluate us and evaluate their the way they fit with us. When we're not doing that, we're only seeing everything that's great. It doesn't present the elements that we need to make a really good decision about this other person. 
and it doesn't give them the opportunity to make a really good decision about us because we are, in a sense, somewhat lying with this particular square. We're usually not doing it consciously. We're not sitting around and making a game plan. But we are responding in ways that aren't completely honest about who we are or how we really behave or what we really want because we want the other person to respond to us in a certain way. We want to maintain this high degree of romance or this high degree of the other person believing in what they see in us. We want to reinforce that for them. That's where the level of distrust actually comes from with this square because we psychically know what's really going on with each other and we can read each other's body language like a book with this square and when it doesn't match which it often doesn't match what's being said we have to be really careful because this is where the erosion starts with this square it is an a corrosive square that over time erodes the trust between the two people. Um, there is a way that we enforce each other's egoic weaknesses with this one. That can show up as mutual escapism into romance, into drug use, into um, escaping from our sensitivities. We generally see two people that reinforce each other's addictions with this particular square, and they are addicted to each other on some level. It's a different kind of addiction than we see with Pluto. Pluto's that dramatic, I, I, I call Pluto and Scorpio in the eighth house, it is descriptive of addictions that we find, and I call it the crack house. Addictions that are stimulants and that are associated with a certain amount of drama. Neptune, 12th house, Pisces, is escapism and addictions related to um, downers. Things that we want to escape from rather than enhance. So we do Neptunian kind of drinking buddy kind of behaviors or we will reinforce each other's um, herbal addictions, whatever it may be. We reinforce each other's addiction to each other as well. So if you have, you know, hard aspect um, from the sun to Neptune, particularly this one, the square in a composite chart, and then you've got some really hard Venus um, Pluto um, or Pluto is relating to the sun somehow, that can be a real recipe for uh, a, an extremely addictive relationship because not only are we addicted, addicted on the Neptunian level, we're addicted on the Plutonic level as well. Um, so when you see the square, you want to weigh it. You want to see what else is going on. Is it just this square or is there other nasty Neptune? Is there Neptune squares to the moon, to Venus, to the ascendant? Ooh. Is it something that is a theme in the composite chart? And is this square coming from a mutual square that we see in Sinistry? If so, this is going to be an overwhelming force in a relationship when you blend in such a way that you create the square in the composite chart. So there's always being, the truth is always being communicated through our energy and our body language. And a lot of times it's not matching what we say with this square because we're saying one thing but we're doing and behaving as another. And so there can be a strong feeling of being gaslighted by each other with this particular square, where we can feel almost a little bit like our reality is being eroded because someone is saying one thing, but they're doing another, or we're confronting them about what they say and they're denying it, and we're, we're not really sure what the reality is. 
there's some cognitive dissonance that can come up between two people with this particular square, and it's something that we are doing to each other, but seeing only as the other person doing to us. You have to get really honest with yourself when you have this particular square, because the reason you're in this relationship and not being honest with the other person is because you're basically not being honest with yourself first. That is why we can have the square and have it last more than a couple of days. We can see the square actually go on for months to years before it starts to break down really, really badly. It breaks down when the infatuation process starts to wane, but it really starts to break down when we start to tell the truth. That's when people get really, really scared with this square. That is when we start to make Neptune real. And I always say that, that Neptune can give us the good stuff, but we have to make it real first. The Buddha was right when he, he pointed out that suffering comes from not facing reality or accepting reality exactly as it is. We have to do that with the square. And if we can show and tell and accept the truth, both in the partner and in ourselves. That's when we have the opportunity to make this square beautiful. There's an extreme amount of psychic sensitivity that's available with this. There's extreme amounts of romance and of being able to slip into this bubble of just enjoying each other's presence and energy and feeling like you're on a high, we can have that long term with this square, but only after we get really honest about what we're showing and what we're telling. Your actions must match your words with this square. If we're going to be able to build the trust that this square erodes, you can get that back. Most couples are not going to go there. This is going to be a square that will kill a relationship. If you can be really practical and if you can be really trusting, this square can be solved. We have to really display ourselves as we are in order to do that. There has to be a high level of trust that <clears throat> the truth that we reveal is going to be accepted, is going to be cared for. There has to be a thick, thick atmosphere of emotional trust if we're going to solve the reasons behind why we have this square. Because we didn't want to show the truth. We didn't want to see the truth. We didn't want to tell the truth. It was a frightening thing. There was a feeling of the truth may end the relationship early, early, early on, subconsciously. That's why we fell into this trance. And this is a, an aspect that can contribute thickly to what I call the trance in long-term relationships. That's, that's the pattern that we fall into. So we have to be able to accept each other's weaknesses and we have to be able to show those weaknesses because what we're doing is we're essentially not trying to, but we are lying about what those are. This is a square that is, again, corrosive to the trust in a relationship because we know on a deeper level, on some kind of psychic level, what the truth is, but we don't want to accept it. And we certainly don't want to show it in ourselves. If you can do that, you can create an atmosphere of intense intimacy, intense romance. The kind of feelings that arise 
after you've only been on you know a several d couple dates with this particular square because you're probably planning on moving to a foreign country together on the second date with this square or doing something else that is you know highly highly romantic but not realistic um, we can get those feelings back and we can have them in a real way for the long term in a long-term relationship Dude, that is amazing that is amazing that that could be most relationships are never going to have the opportunity to, to reclaim those early days and those early days of romance sit with us very heavily with the square we very much want to reproduce those we very much hang on to the memory of the high romance that the square produced between the two of us we can go there again but we have to make it real through true revelation and through true acceptance with this square and it's gonna take work and it's gonna take risk and it's gonna take a certain amount of being extremely honest with yourself before you can address the honesty that needs to exist between the two of you in the larger scope of the relationship so I hope this was helpful if it was, please subscribe to my channel. You can find me on the internet at truthandaspectastrology.com. Yes, I do private consultation. I'm mainly a relationship and intimacy astrologer, but I interpret all types of charts. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, other social media under Truth and Aspect Astrology. I'll be back super soon with more super cool videos. Bye-bye.